Just a quick point, this last Sunday of Advent, as we prepare ourselves for Christmas, all kind of provoked by a question that's always on my mind, with this scene, you might call the greatest of scenes, the single most important scene in the history of humanity. For if Mary says no, and she could have said no, then you and I, as far as we know, would have no hope. So what makes it possible for Mary to say yes? How is it that she can respond to an angel with this news? Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Do to me whatever you want. I'm always struck by the fact that almost every depiction of the Annunciation, Mary's is, Mary is almost always shown, I mean, Gabriel comes to her, on her knees with a Bible in front of her. I find that striking. I think Mary is able to say yes. Mary is able to surrender because she trusts God. Because she is a woman of the Scriptures. She knows that God is faithful. She knows that nothing is impossible for him. She knows that all he has done throughout the history of the people of Israel And because she knows it, when Gabriel comes to her and asks her if she will say yes, she says yes because she knows God. Do you? Do I? Something that is worth reflecting on these days in light of what we just heard. How does one become a Christian? How does a person become a Christian? Are you a Christian by birth? No. There's only one way you can become a Christian. Only one. You and I have to make a decision to follow him. Now part of that means you get baptized, but you can't rely too much on the externals of our faith, as crucial, as important as they are. There must be an internal ascent, if you will. We have to choose to follow Jesus. Because a Christian is a disciple of Jesus, and a disciple is someone who follows another. But how can you and I possibly make a decision to follow someone if we don't know them? And how can I get to know anybody unless I spend time with them? You can't. One of the problems we face today is that so many of us are are biblically illiterate. We don't, like Mary, find ourselves daily in his word. And since we're not daily in his word, we don't know with the conviction that he is faithful, that he is good, that he is merciful, that he hasn't promised me a life that will be easy. We don't know with every fiber of our being that nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible for him. So in this last week of Advent, as many of us may be frantically running around trying to do that last minute shopping, I'd encourage us to maybe pump the brakes a little bit and imitate our lady in the art of pondering, of looking, of reflecting, meditating, perhaps above all, on this passage. So the thing we may want to do this week is to ask Mary to accompany us to dive into this passage. Try 10 minutes every morning or every night before you go to bed. Reading Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. Perhaps then Mary can teach us how God is faithful to teach us to the courage to say yes, which can only come if we know him. So let Mary help us to get to know him. When you put your, up your mangers this week, put them out and stare at him, who is lying there in a trough for us. Who could be 
more worth knowing, spending time with, than the God who has done all that he has done for us, for whom nothing is impossible, who has become man, who has triumphed over sin and death, who is our hope.